Well, hello and welcome to a very special edition of the Terry Cole Show. First, I want to say for anyone who celebrates, happy Christmas Eve, because that is today. And I'm wishing you the most beautiful uh, celebration tomorrow. But what this episode is going to focus on is New Year's. So every year, I start this process, and those of you who've been in my crew for a while, you know what we do every year this time of year. We don't really do New Year's resolutions, and I can get into that in a bit. We actually make a decision based on this question. So here it is. What crap are you leaving in 2019? This is a ritual that I've been doing for many years, and I'm inviting you to do it. And along with this episode, you'll be able to download your own little ritual kit with all the questions and the exact way to do it. So let's start with why, why no to resolutions for me. I feel like it's a setup to fail. That's just my own experience. I, I don't know why, but I, I feel like I overpromise to myself what I'm going to do and that I don't do it and that I feel terrible that I didn't do it. There seems to be... It's almost like resolutions are only forward thinking. What am I going to do? But from a therapeutic point of view, do you know what is more effective? Is to look back, is to look back for evidence of what you've been doing, of what has been working and what hasn't been working in your life. So it isn't just about doing more. And I feel like that's such a, we're in such a go, go, go culture. It's like, yes, let me just do more. We don't need to be doing more. Maybe on your non-resolution list, maybe some of the crap that you're leaving in 2019 could be this need to have so many to-do lists, right? Maybe in 2019, you could live a little more, plan a little bit less. That might actually be valuable in your life. So all of our uh, crap we're leaving lists will be very different, of course, because we're all different. So I'll explain the concept. Um, because you're going to make more than one list. And then we've got a ritual that goes along with it. So you understand the reason for doing it. I think a lot of people are kind of over resolutions. So let's start with what the first list is. We're going to make a couple of lists. Um, and again, this will all be in the downloadable guide for you. So you don't have to take notes right now, but just open your mind and open your heart to a new process. So the first list is crap you're living in 2019. So this can consist of people, places, things, experiences, feelings, anything that really is no longer serving or never served your greatest good. We're going to be leaving that in 2019. And there's something really powerful, powerful about making that decision when you recognize that something's not working. When you make a commitment to yourself to make some kind of a change, if the way that you're feeling or how you're interacting in your relationships or where you work or whatever it is really isn't working for you. So can you see how like adding more crap to do on top of that without looking at that would be an ineffective way to go into the new year if you want 2020 to be your year of wealth, epic love, you know, we're also in the middle of Real Love Revolution season right now. So please don't forget to add whatever crap you'd like to leave that has to do with your love life. That will also go on the crap you're leaving list. Think about things that are painful. Think about things that have been stressful, unsatisfying, or just plain wrong for you in 2019. Let's just put all that on the list and you might have feel kind of like oh, I don't know how is this going to work if you're feeling resistance to doing something new um, I promise you this will be more effective than actually making resolutions that you will most likely break by February 1st you know so we're going to do all areas of your life it isn't just your romantic life or your financial life it's going to be your home life it's going to be your work life friendships health and wellness so you'll see in the PDF, it's all broken down into those categories. And I want you to really give yourself expansion. Give yourself time and space and the luxury of thinking about these things in a real way. 
don't let this experience, because it's really an exercise to reflect on the year. Give gratitude for what was right and get really honest with yourself about what wasn't working for you. Because that's the only way, right? What, what do I say? The five pillars of transformation or self-mastery or real love, according to Terry Cole, the first pillar is always self-awareness. Because we cannot change that which we are unaware. It is impossible. Or, or we can't change things that we're in denial of either. Things that we're saying, it's okay and I'm fine. And a lot for women, there, there's a lot of this like um, abandoning ourselves that we do when we say things like, well, I'm easy, I'm not fussy. Oh yeah, it's not a problem, everything is fine, everything is okay with me, it's all good. Here's the thing, in real life, you know what? It's never all good. It really isn't, and that's okay. So in this process, this ritual, we're really doing something real, which is taking off the rose-colored glasses and looking at the last 12 months. What happened? How do you feel about it? What do you want to happen in the next 12 months? Right, that's basically what this is about. I never use the, the phrase like manifesting because it's just like, eh, it's so played out and people think it means you think it's magical, it's not. If we're talking about creating what you want in your life, it always has to be an idea in your mind. You have to be able to visualize having that thing and this is part of the ritual that we'll be doing but it, it's not about well i just want this and that's it it's about understanding why you don't have it it's about understanding why 2019 was the way that it was and how you felt so that you cannot repeat that in 2020 so once you're done with the first list now it's time to move into the second list and this is kind of my favorite list a little bit well the next two i love them both but the the next one is you're going to write down all of the gems from the crap from 2019. So this is a list of, because it's very easy to be very, uh, to think very two or one dimensionally about a problem or an issue. Like if you're not happy at your job and you're like, yeah, but the whole problem is my boss. And it's like, okay, that's not true. It can't be true, right? Because the problem, every, every problem we have with another person is 50% us and 50% them. But there's something that, valuable that you learned about yourself by having that crappy boss. And you can't say that the gem from the crap is that you realized your boss is a jerk, right? Because that really isn't a gem for you. A gem of wisdom for you is having a deeper understanding of yourself, is saying, ah, oh, you know, this is kind of what I learned was that I let too many things slide because I didn't know how to have the conversation. And then I ended up really bitter. And then we ended up with this bad relationship. So what I learned is that I need to speak up sooner. Does this make sense? I know that you know it does. So moving into every bad situation, even the worst situations in the world, the worst, my, my niece passed away three years ago and even in that situation, I would never want it. And if I could have her back right now, I would give back any gem that I learned. But if I'm being honest, there are things that I learned about myself because of her untimely passing. And there are things that shifted within my family system that are gems that would not have happened had she not transitioned so young. So it, it's not about, I don't want you to think about the gems like that that means that you condoned the situation or even if it's like a terrible breakup right by finding gems of wisdom for yourself in that situation that's not the same as condoning what another person has done or condoning it you know being grateful for a terrible situation that's not what i'm talking about but i am talking about human nature and the, and we are so adaptive and we do learn and it's so important if we want to keep learning that we're able to see that in every crap stew, there are gems of wisdom, but you gotta wanna look for them. You've gotta get out of that feeling of being victimized, even if it feels like the wrongest thing in the world that happened, um, and be willing to get your hands dirty, open your eyes, 
open your mind, open your heart, and really look and say, what did I get from this experience? Because I promise you, you learned something. This, this is part of the evolutionary path, is being willing to do hard things. And you can do hard things. All of you, I know, because we've been hanging out for a bit, you can do hard things. All right, so now let's go to list three, which is super fun. And this is about what you're creating in 2020. So these are aspirational th things. These are things that we're going to visualize that we want to like really, how do I want it to be? What do I want to happen? Do you want 2020 to be your year of revolutionary love? Well, then that's what's gonna be on your list. Do you want to make more money in 2020? How about be specific about how much more money you wanna make? So, so let's, and again, you'll see in the PDF that I'm giving you, it's basically a ritual kit. You'll, you'll have each area of your life. So you'll be able to pretty much easily be like, okay, this is what I want in this area and that area. And next to each one of those things, what we're going to be doing is putting in how we want to feel in all those areas. So if you say, I want to uh, change jobs, you know, and I want to feel inspired, lit up, motivated, enthusiastic. So sort of think desire map stuff and we'll, I'll provide some of the feeling states for you in case you don't wanna just use the same three. Very much like my pal, Danielle La uh, Laporte's core desired feeling, all of her desire mapping stuff um, is so key because this will help us. First of all, it's putting your stake in the ground. You're basically telling the universe, this is, I'm bringing this to me. I'm willing to do the work, but I'm also attracting this into my life in 2020. And I know many of you, because we've been doing all of our Wednesday wisdoms and talking about all the things, you know, right now I'm, I'm right up to my eyeballs and love, 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 that a lot of you, either want your relationship to be better in 2020, if you're in a committed relationship, um, either bring the passion back, um, want it to be more exciting, want it to have more energy, want to have more sex, or you might be single and you really want this year to be your year of epic, real love. And so you want to write that. And then how will that make you feel? How do you want to feel in that experience. So we're going to really get into the nitty gritty of when you're in your right and perfect relationship, how do you feel? Do you feel cherished? Do you feel important? Do you feel loved? Do you feel listened to? Do you feel seen and heard? We're really going to get into it, especially the area of the thing that you really want the most. I want you to spend time on and then create some kind of a visualization practice around those things happening. Why do you think vision boards work? I believe that they do. It's like whatever's in the front of your mind, whatever you think about the most, whatever you spend the most psychological energy on is the thing that you're going to create in your life or the thing you're gonna worry about and that means nothing happens. So it's gotta be taking up space in your mind in the way of visualizing and feeling the feelings of having the things that you want. So that's not the same as being worried it's not gonna happen, right? Because that's essentially praying for the exact opposite of what you want to happen. So it's like we must be courageous enough to allow ourselves to hope and do more than hope, right? Visualizing is not hoping. Visualizing creates hope though, because when you can see it, the next step is creating and or attracting it. So this list is super important and super fun to actually do and do it with friends. I usually make my family do it every year. They're like, oh, come on. But I do, I print it out, we have fun. And then we're going to move into the actual ritual itself, right? And you can, again, do, do a New Year's party and have people do this, it's fine, print them out. Um, but we want to ritualistically burn the list of the crap that we're leaving in 2019. And this is a really important part because we are releasing um, 
the energy of those things. We are consciously, mindfully, and um, with intention, we are releasing those things out into the universe and out of our experience. That's really the thing is we want to basically put our stake in the ground, put the universe on notice that we do not want this anymore. So there's a whole cord cutting thing um, that my friend Lara has that I'm also gifting you in here. So there's a whole bunch of things that if you've got some time off and you feel like doing a little bit of energy work around creating what it is that you want in 2020, It'll all be right in here in your ritual kit that's attached to this. When you're done with the burning, and you can do it with friends where you can either share what you say with my family. We don't actually share it. Funny. If I was with my girlfriends, I probably would. But when I do it with my grown kids and their wives and stuff, we all just go, that's cool. That, that's yours. No problem. But then we burn it ritualistically where everyone, we make a little fire, we throw it in, and then you have the feeling. You, we actually say, I'm so happy and grateful now that I am free and there's like this weight lifted and this liberation of leaving what isn't working for you in the past because you have to really think about it negative feelings they really give off a vibration right so imagine that if you're constantly worrying or focusing on what you don't have it's like they have little hooks on them and imagine them coming out of your body hooking like things because that's what they do and dragging it back into your experience. Again, the exact opposite of what you're wanting to happen. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna have, you know, as uh, Barack Obama's book, Audacity of Hope, we're gonna have audacity and have hope and believe that what we want is possible. Because the real thing is, why not you? Why not you? There's no reason why you shouldn't have what you want in life. And it doesn't matter where you've been before this moment in time or what you've done. So much of the time we carry around this guilt and this shame. We did the wrong things. We, we weren't nice to this one or whatever it is that we did. And it's like, or, or we have childhood things that are, you know, that, that basically we carry around and make us feel unworthy of having the things that we want in life. And I just want you to really get real with yourself about we are human beings we make mistakes this is the way we are wired we're not meant to be perfect and we're not this is all life school right we're, we're just learning so if you find that you go back to feeling unworthy because you did this wrong thing or that wrong thing work that shit out somehow or just decide to let it go it's so tired it's so boring it's such a low vibration. And here's the thing. You're torturing yourself for no reason. If you need to, to make amends with someone, do it. If you need to go to a priest and confess, do it. If you need to get into therapy, do it. Whatever you need to do to stop being your own worst enemy when it comes to guilt and shame, I say make 2020 the year that you actually do it. Because that stuff will get in the way of you creating the life that you want way more than anything else will your belief that you don't deserve it. Because I promise you, trust me, do you trust me? You do deserve it. And you've gotta be willing to work for it. Working for it means letting all the crap from 2019 go, acknowledge it, learn what you can learn from it, and move into 2020 with bright eyes and an, an optimistic vibe on what is possible for you in your life and that is really on you right that is on you no one else can do that for you but i'm hoping that this beautiful ritual of crap you're leaving in 2019 will be a pivot point for you if you've been stuck that you will use this as a way to move forward in your beautiful amazing one of a kind life because you're the only one who can and I'm here as like your ass kicking GPS to get you to where you need to go, right? But you, all the answers that you need are really within you. I'm just here to help you find them within you. So I hope, I can't wait. You have to drop a comment and let me know how you feel, what happened, how was it? Um, 
I'm so excited. I want to know what you're manifesting, what you're leaving. So leave me comments in all the many places. If you like this and you think someone else could benefit from it, please share it on your social media platforms. Um, I will say happy holidays to all of you who are celebrating tomorrow. Um, I'm not yet. Yeah, next week um, is New Year's. So I'm going to say happy New Year's now because I believe I will be celebrating somewhere, maybe on a beach, maybe somewhere else, but I will most likely not be doing a brand new episode on that day. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot wait to hang out with you in 2020 and help you build the life, the relationship, and the career that thrills you. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. You could spend it with anyone. And I so, so appreciate you for being in my crew. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you have an amazing week. And I mean, our Real Love Revolution stuff is going to keep on going. So the lives are happening. Wednesday Wisdom is still happening. We're, um, I think we're taking off just this in between this week and next week. But then everything ramps back up the first week in January. So I will see you then. Let's talk about love, love, love. I hope you have an amazing time off if you're getting time off. And as always, take care of you.